What's up, guys? This is the second part. Uh, uh, part two. We're gonna listen to my man right here. Sebastian Borger is the co-founder of Sandbox, and we want to hear what he, what he, what he's gonna say about his company. We so we can discuss it a little bit. Right? An online gallery without any connection. Uh, the one box metaverse, and and this land is part of this map. It has a precise location. And the location is going to be important in how players are going to uh, discover your game, explore the map, and play the overall experience. So it's not just like a gallery uh, where there will be an unlimited number of... Okay, so you see, it's not like a gallery where there's going to be an unlimited amount. It's going to be very scarce. So when you buy a piece of property on a virtual world, it's going to become legit. I want to ask you guys a question. I don't know if you guys want to answer this. Like, so you buy a property on a virtual world. You don't take like, anybody don't take like the government should get involved so that there cannot be scammers against your property. This is your property in the virtual world. You're making money out of it. You're renting it. And there's a whole world that that is living in that virtual world. The virtual world is going to become even more intense than what, what we think, guys. This is just the beginning. We are, we are just scratching, scratching the surface. You know what I'm saying? Think about this. You have a, a property at a specific address at the virtual world. This is your property. Somebody wants to go there and have a party. You can tell them, okay, go there. I'm going to rent it to you. Or somebody wants to rent a place there. You can rent it. So right now is the, the best time for us to think about properties or places where we want to have in the virtual world so that we can make money maybe five, ten years down the line. Games, we're really tied in this uh, map, in this virtual world, as a player with your avatar, once you're, um, you enter a world, you can move into the next world by moving to the edges of it and then um, being teleported to the neighborland in the new spawn point. So there will be a lot of um, exploration and, and location of your uh, land is really important in this paradigm. Additionally, in the sandbox metaverse and this map, we have major partners and brands who also have a point of presence. So the location of uh, the lands that you choose to publish your game is going to matter. If your game... So the location of the land matters. Um, uh, it, so uh, uh, remember, this is coming from the CEO. Okay, think about it. The location of the land matters. So you buy property, you 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 check out where places where you want to invest. It matters where it is because you the price of that land is going to go up. Is essentially located near Atari or near uh, one of the uh, main Korean partners, for example, like Playdab, SBS Game Academy, uh, Sandbox Network, just to name a few. Then your game has more chances to be found by players. You will get more players moving and using our transportation system from either the portals, um, connecting those partner lands, or just moving from one land to another. And we think it's, it's important to be part of a virtual world. It's not just like having an unlimited number of creation in an online gallery without any connection, uh, the one to the other. It's really about this logic of neighborhood, exploration, socializing with other players, participating in uh, well, the different tournaments that will be available once we launch the beta and in 2021. Being part of a faction and contributing with other players to complete quests together, like in traditional MMORPG games. So the vision of Sandbox is bringing into a 3D virtual world, combining user-generated content on one side and on the other side, the key uh, game mechanics, quests, um, uh, winning, faction, uh, collecting resources, trading resources, monetizing resources now, thanks to the use of non-fungible tokens and tokens. And overall, combining all these ingredients makes the sandbox really unique. It's, it's just more than um, a Minecraft or Roblox because of this metaverse map. Players, gamers, they've been used for more than 20 years now to play into 
centralized, closed wall garden MMORPG games or virtual world games. What it means concretely is, as a player, anything you earn or you bought using real money, Korean won, US dollar, was actually virtual asset that you didn't really own because if you, you could not sell it to other players, you could not exchange it to other players. If you left the game, you actually lost all your belongings from the game. You had no way to actually transfer them somehow uh, in other places. And the main developers behind all those uh, large MMORPG games um, were restricting the possibility for you as a player to sell uh, part of the content you earn, to sell your player account or transfer it to another user, etc. So that are, these are still very strong limitations that are still present in most of uh, nowadays MMORPG virtual world uh, games. And because we've been growing um, in games like this for the past 20 years, any in-app purchase we made, any virtual currency we bought in mobile free-to-play games, we never thought of it like something that we could actually take out after or reuse in other way across many games or resell to other users. We've been grown accustomed to the idea of those are perishable goods, those are just consumable that are going to be lost. So we didn't attach any value to those at the end of the day. It, it just seemed normal. But with the use of blockchain technology, we're finally seeing something new, really interesting opportunity for gamers to appear. This is what we call the open metaverse. In the open metaverse, you no longer have a central authority like a game developer that is going to uh, define what you can do in the game and what you can do with the content you bought uh, in the game. This is what Sandbox is offering as well as some other decentralized virtual world where all the content, all the tokens and currencies are actually uh, owned by the user via their wallet or their accounts, just to keep things simple. And as such, the users, the players, can transfer those tokens, those belongings as a digital game assets without asking the permission to the game developer. They can do it, just publish their content on other platforms, other marketplace. They can even use their content in other games that would enable... Guys! <coughs> Ah, I love technology, man. I love technology. I, I look at technology and the, and the modern world, like, it's creating a world where, like, there's no longer one point of contact. Like, you don't have to rely on one person. Like, you see, he, basically what he's telling us here is that the developer is no longer needed. You can create your new things on your own. And that's beautiful. It's an open world or open metaverse. So there's no need to, you know what I'm saying? So, so God knows how the world's going to look like 100 years from now. <coughs> That's basically what he's saying. We don't know what the world's going to look like. The metaverse. It's going to change. Uh, uh, it's going to change drastically. You know? So that's basically what he's telling us. And we have to be prepared for that. And I'm all for it, man. It's like, that's amazing to hear that. Yep, it's very amazing to hear that from him. Yeah, the world, the world of the future is like it's basically it's gonna break the power structure. I'm even wondering will there be government in the future? It's it's creating some sort of equality in, in, in its own way organically without one person say that I'm gonna give you the equality. Basically, I, I don't mean to get into politics, but guys, like, I don't know if you guys see that, the, the, a lot of politics on, on, on many occasions, it's like, oh, I need to give you uh, whatever, whatever it is, uh, equal equal money, equal thing, but I need to give you a thousand dollars a month, whatever, to make it equal so that we can remove the, uh, the, 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 the class gap, right? We can make everybody, uh, like, um, more similar. By increasing the minimum wage, all those things are like, and those are good things, but I'm just saying, it seems like technology itself does it itself. 
without us wanting it's not like it's not it's not like we wanted it to be like that it just happened to be like that it just happened it's like magic i really believe that technology came from god i really believe that i think it came from god because it's like it blesses all of us you look at like a podcast you look at like a podcast like back in the days you needed to get to your station you needed like a somebody to like and right now you just open your podcast and you might have your own channel look at a youtube channel youtube channel is like a television channel basically so everybody has their own tv channel it's amazing the world is and i like that from technology that's the blessing of technology i want to hear him say that again i like what he said listen to what he said again this is what sandbox is offering as well as some other decentralized virtual world where all the content, all the tokens and currencies are actually uh, owned by the user via their wallet or their accounts, just to keep things simple. And as such, the users, the players can transfer those tokens, those belongings as a digital game asset without asking the permission to the game developer. They can do it, just publish their content on other platforms, other marketplace. They can even use their content in other games that would enable, that would accept those tokens and even use uh, the content from one game to another as a way to attract the players from one another. We think that the technology is really bringing something, a major benefit here to the players through this notion of true digital ownership of all the content you either won as a player or even better, made as a creator. And that's where Sandbox is really uh, differentiating and disrupting against other uh, user-generated content platforms like Minecraft or Fullbox. Everything you create is finally yours. So there's the value of the content uh, that, uh, that you made that has a sentimental value added to the existing value that not, that content being potentially scarce, rare, can be sold uh, and appreciated by other players. Yes, indeed. And this is amazing. So you create something, God knows what's going to happen to that content, that stuff that you created using the blockchain technology like five years down the line. The price might increase drastically. So always remember that, guys. Like so. You gotta get out there and start creating things. Just stay focused, guys. You guys, like, I have to say that to the young, young generation. You guys are growing up in the best generation ever because I grew up, I'm, I'm a little bit older than many people that are in the gaming right now. Uh, and I feel like it's not fair. I didn't have those opportunities. Those are good opportunities. You can get involved and create your own thing. You create your own character. Let's look at this character right here. And what if a lot of people like that character? And a lot of people wanna when it's you with that character. If an item is rare and there is only, let's say, 10 copies of this magic world available in the world, before you had to trust the game developer that indeed there was 10 copies. But what prevented the game developer to make 10 more and tell you that yes, there is 10, but actually sell a thousand to all players around the world? You had literally no way to, to do that. So you couldn't uh, actually appreciate the real value and the real scarcity of your digital assets. You couldn't transfer those assets to other players. You essentially couldn't leverage the opportunity to own a rare content, either as a player or to just sell it to uh, other users. Now with blockchain, we have finally the public ledger, public database that is fully transparent and enables anyone to have the proof of the scarcity of the item. So if there is only 10 copies of a magic word, you can check it. And indeed then, the real value of this word can be appreciated by anyone because you know who owned it. You know there's only 10 available indeed. And as such, we are finally building, thanks to the technology, a new layer that enables a real world economy based on digital game assets. Yes! I gotta end the video there. I gotta end the video there, guys. This is like, uh, this is my favorite clip right there. Um, this is a new digital economy 
And the fact that the blockchain technology is like the, a ledger that cannot make any mistakes. So basically, there cannot be like a fraud copy of that asset. So the fact that there's scarcity, and scarcity, you know, that's the key for increasing the price of something, right? You know the law of supply and demand. So if you have like very scarce item, you created it, that item can start, the price can start going up if a lot of players, people start to ask for it. So remember that, guys. Okay. So, um, so basically, I'm going to end the video there. Please subscribe to my channel. Have a good day, guys.